I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to attempt to break Dharma's olive brown acid dye using a dip dyeing technique. What do I mean when I say I want to break a color? When you have a premixed color that has multiple pigments in it, sometimes these pigments bind to yarn at different rates and so depending on the technique you're using you might see the colors break or separate into the different components. So with a purple, you might see it split into blues and pinks. And today, we may see this color break into brown and green, which I think would be really, really beautiful. The reason why I think this has a chance is because I recently dyed with this olive brown color to do a tonal, and after adding the yarn into the pot when I removed it, I saw a green color, and this happened pretty quickly from when I was setting it up. And so there are some circumstances with that experiment that could mean we don't end up getting that green and capturing that green at the end of our yarn, but we're gonna give this the best shot we can. So today I am going to be dyeing 100 grams of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn. This yarn is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. It's non super wash and therefore a yarn I use for a lot of breaking projects. The reason why I like to do this on a non super wash yarn is that in general, pigments strike to non super wash yarn slower than they do super wash. And so there are some pigments with non super wash yarn that need more acid and heat in order to strike. And so in general, the odds of being able to exaggerate the breaking are a little bit better here than they might be with some other types of techniques. But it may not work but we don't know until we try. Uh, and so a lot of times they're colors that people don't want breaking to happen. I embrace it. Uh, I love it. <laughs> and so I try to take advantage of it when that's something that exists. So yeah, let's go measure out our dye. I put on my Deluxe Rubber respirator, safety glasses and gloves, and then measured out one gram of the olive brown acid dye. I debated going with one and a half or two grams of the dye but I figured let's start with one and if the color ends up being a little bit too light then we can try this again with more uh, but the more dye we have sometimes the harder it can be to see that breaking because just there's a lot of pigment there and it can affect the rates. I used hot tap water to dissolve our dye and I didn't worry about the volume because we're going to use 100% of this dye to dye our yarn. Here in my stainless steel dedicated dye pot, we're going to add eight cups of water. And I think I want more. We're going to bring it up to 16. Okay, 16 cups of water. The reason for the debate is because more water means the colors will strike a little bit slower, uh, which we don't always want, but we're going to go for it. And ooh, this is a color that shifts with the pour. Uh, what I have left in here is very blue. That's cool. That's cool. We could probably do something like what we did with sea spray with this one. There's some pigments in here that I think are gonna take um, longer to absorb in some kind of situations. But um, I haven't add, add, added any acid yet. We're gonna start heating this up and I'll come over with our vinegar. If we had eight cups of water in here, I would add just one tablespoon of white vinegar. But since there's 16 cups, I'm gonna add two. And we're gonna let this heat up and get to a boil or just below a boil before we come over to start dip dyeing. All right, I hope we didn't wait too long. We're on a low boil. I'm gonna go get the yarn. And I squeezed out most of the water from the pre-soak. And now we're gonna start dip dyeing. Slowly, slowly. Going in. You know what's funny is when I lift it up, I see some green in the yarn. Which is interesting, because when it goes in, I see much more brown. When I come up, I'm seeing a lot of green. This is different from what I observed before when I saw browns strike first and greens later. So I don't know 
what's going on, but I'm definitely seeing greens in the yarn right now. This is interesting because it is definitely not going the way I anticipated. Yeah, I mean, what's left is almost looking purpley. This is so different from what we had before. Now, one difference between this and what I observed last time is that this time things are hot, and the last time I added things in cold. But we have much more of like a reddish finish that we're getting here. This is not the first color to ever behave slightly differently hot than cold. Twilight Gray is another one that I've seen behave differently if I'm starting off hot or starting off cold. This is the exact same dye, the exact same day, and what's left is purple. There's no question there is green there at the beginning and that we are ending with something that is a lot more purple. This is not what I expected at all. At, at all. And, oh my gosh, because definitely at the end of the other one, and again, that was a tonal and I wasn't dipping. It was also with a superwash yarn, but the end, I absolutely, unequivocally, saw the green at the end, and I'm seeing that green kind of go in first here now, and we're finishing with a purple. This is beautiful. Completely unexpected. Completely unexpected. Oh my goodness. What? <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, all right, we're gonna let this heat for 30 minutes to finish setting the color, and well, let's go chat. This absolutely is going to need more investigation, more discovery, because we have observed something that is not what I expected from something I had done earlier today. Now, Twilight Gray is a color where sometimes I saw it break into like a gray and purple, and then other times it just looked more navy. And there were times when I swatched it and it looked completely different, so much that I did a whole video on looking at dyes hot versus cold to see how they behaved, because there's a few colors where I observed this. And so it's not surprising that we would find something else, but we did. So there are some pigments that behave different way, differently, whether it's the solubility or how they bind to yarn and the order that they bind to yarn if you're starting hot or if you're starting cold. And so if things are all binding at the similar rate, you might get more of the average color. If things are binding at different rates, you might see different separations like we did here. So part of me is debating, uh, debating whether right now I should go and try to soak more yarn and try this again. And unfortunately, I don't have time in my dye schedule today. So th whatever this video is, it's going to need a follow up. It's going to need a part two. And I think it's going to need me editing it and editing that other video where I used olive brown earlier today to compare and keep track of the conditions closely. So that way I can try this again. We can set up two pots, have one hot, one cold, use the same yarn base and see if we get different results. I think that that's an experiment that needs to happen uh, because there are times when you might be expecting something to happen with a color and you might get a surprise and it could be the, like, the heat and the acid when you're doing things. And so some dyes are trickier. They're trickier and uh, they behaved a little differently under different conditions. And that's what we found today. <laughs> so if you would like to see this follow-up video, which I do plan on making at some point, it's just I'm going to rely on future Rebecca, editing Rebecca, to make notes so that way I make sure I can replicate both of these scenarios as closely as possible. And I know one of the things I saw was on superwash, one was on non-superwash, and so maybe we'll plan to try this uh, on either both superwash and both non-superwash. Maybe we'll do four different situations, so that way again we can try to replicate the our observations so then we can make a more definitive conclusion. Uh, but, I mean, who knows? Wow. 
Anyway, let me know in the comments if you want to see that video. And while you're at it, subscribe and turn on notifications. It's only been eight minutes, but I have one other thought. Uh, it could be when the acid comes into play as well, because the other yarn came into the pot with the dye with no acid, and then we added the acid and then saw that grain towards the end before things had really had a chance to heat up. This time, the dye was present with the acid for a while, heating up before we added the yarn. So, it's just another variable that I have observed. The 30 minutes are up, I just turned off the heat, and there is no question that we have breaking here. None whatsoever. Um, we've got purple and, I mean, it's an olive green slash brown there. Uh, this, this is Twilight Gray 2.0. I really think it is. So I'm gonna set this aside to cool, and then we can wash it. Let's wash our olive brown yarn. In where I see olive green, a little bit of a purpley color, which to be fair, there are some more elements in here that feel very purple, but it might just feel brown once it dries. But there's no question that we have some very dramatic color breaking here. I'm not expecting to see any color bleeding. We do want to be a little bit careful as we wash this because it's non super wash yarn. We don't want it to felt. But I added some dish soap and we'll fill this up a bit. Yeah, I'm not seeing any color come back out, which is nice. There were definitely yellows left in the pot, a lot that I had to rinse off. So I'm not sure what was going on there. But. I'm gonna go ahead and put this yarn through my spin dryer, hang it up to dry, and then we'll come back for some conclusions. Olive brown, huh? Can you believe that this is olive brown? We have like an army green that goes into a purple, that goes into a light bluish gray. Nothing here feels remotely brown. I mean, because that purple just also isn't intense enough that you would think it would shift it brown. I am so excited to do a deeper dive into this color. I'm excited to look at it hot and cold, maybe when we add the acid. I don't know if I'll look at every single potential variable that could change the way that the different pigments are absorbing, or if I'm just gonna go until, <laughs> like with my deeper dive into what makes sea spray sometimes look more blue and more green, and I found right away that just pouring makes a difference. And so like how well things are dissolved and stirred could make the difference. I don't think that's it here. I have a feeling that the heat is coming into play, but we'll see if I can replicate conditions where I dip dye to get this, or if I dip dye to get something that feels more brown. Uh, and so fingers crossed that this works, but subscribe and do all the youtube -y things like giving the video a thumbs up, uh, turning on notifications, leaving comments below, so that way YouTube will share my content with more people and it helps the channel grow. I feel like something about this is the reverse of what happened with me with Twilight Gray. I dip dyed into it early on, saw it break extremely beautifully, and then I did another project where I thought I would be getting it break, but instead it looked more navy, and I was confused, but, you know, kind of went with it. So I'm hoping I can replicate this. Believe me, I will be taking detailed notes about what I did today to see what we can see. But anyway, I am very excited and I hope you are as well. If you're looking for other ways to help support the content here, I do have an Etsy shop, Chemnitz Creations, and a Patreon. Uh, you can find more details about everything and where else you can find me on social media down in the video description. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.